Hey guys, welcome to Media Hype Train. My name is Steve, and in this video, I'm going to give you my review of the Logitech X56 Hotas and give you my honest opinion on if this is a good way to play Star Citizen and other flight and space simulation games. For the first part of this review, I'll give you a high level overview of the Hotas, then, I'm going to show you an up close look at it and the key bindings that I personally use for Star Citizen. Finally, we'll end with some gameplay video from Star Citizen and DCS World showing off how fluid the controls are when using this HOTAS. The black and silver Logitech X56 HOTAS that is now being sold by Logitech is a huge improvement in both build quality and performance over the black and blue version previously sold by SideTech. Make sure if you purchase this HOTAS that you do get the Logitech version. With Logitech's manufacturing skill behind it, the X56 is now a great mid-range HOTAS to use in space simulation games like Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous, or flight sim games like DCS World and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Owners of this HOTAS will also be happy to know that the upcoming Star Wars Squadrons game, due for release later this year, will also have full HOTAS support. The X56 comes with it both a throttle and stick controller, and using the HOTAS will provide you with 6 degrees of freedom for movement and it comes with over 190 programmable controls. Inside the box you'll find 4 easily interchangeable springs so that you can find the resistance level and tension that feels perfect for you. The throttle and stick each come with a good length USB cable, and I was able to put each piece of hardware on opposite ends of my desk to keep them out of the way when not in use. Because the X56 stick controller has a twist function, you also don't have to use foot pedals like most other HOTAS. Overall, after two weeks of using this, I have come away very impressed. I love the overall styling of the HOTAS, and I found that there were way more buttons to switches than I actually needed. But that's a great thing considering that games like Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, and DCS World are all games that are constantly evolving and adding new features. The software to change the RGB lighting is incredibly easy to use, and I found that most games already have profiles either created by the developers or the community. Even without profiles though, I also found that programming the HOTAS for using games was actually incredibly easy in all of my testing. This HOTAS feels great and will really help immerse you in any game requiring flight controls. I really think that the HOTAS has improved my dogfighting and flight skills and they're a real joy to play with. After two weeks, I really have not found any cons to give you guys. The HOTAS retails for around $250, that's US, and it really is in top of the class in terms of mid-range HOTAS. I'll leave an Amazon link down in the description, but I'll warn you that stock has been really low recently. Um, but really, um, I check the Amazon site a few times a week and I have seen that it's being restocked a couple of times during the week, so just check back often or sign up for a stock alert site, uh, something like Zoolert. If you have any questions about the HOTAS, please feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out to me via Twitter. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos about VR and simulation games, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay happy, humble, and yourself. Stay tuned for Hotas gameplay from Star Citizen and DCS World. Okay, and here we have my X56. And I'll just show you quickly an overview of most of the buttons and switches and how I have them used in Star Citizen. Of course, you can use this for Elite Dangerous and any other flight simulator game as well. Um, we know that Star Wars Squadrons is going to have full capabilities and support for HOTAS. Um, and yeah, there's plenty of other games out there. But anyway, so I'll go ahead and give you the overview of this. Obviously, you have your throttle here. There's a switch right here that can be used to separate this into use for like a left and a right engine in a game like DCS World. Um, I'll call this a tension controller so you can use this to make the throttle stiffer or looser. I personally like a stiff one with a, has a little bit of a weight on it. That's because I usually fly, I um, mean, you know, I like space sim games, so it makes sense that the throttle has some weight to it. Here you can actually have different modes, so think of that as three different profiles you can have within a game. Um, I don't personally use that, but the capability is there. I use this up switch to make myself flight ready. I use the bottom switch to open and close doors. Here I use the top switch to toggle the landing gear up and down, and I use the bottom switch for auto land. I use the top switch here to begin the spooling of the quantum drive, and I use the bottom switch here to actually activate the quantum drive. I have not found a use for these yet, this actually feels really good, and there's a second one over on the other piece of this as well, the other piece of the HOTAS, but I haven't found a use for it. 
I use this for afterburner. I'm not quite sure what to do with this one yet. I use this button up to cycle through vehicle or outside of the ship views and then pulling it back gives me a look behind view. This has a lot of different axes of rotation as well, but I haven't found a use for that. I use this bottom span wheel here for dynamic zoom inside of the ship. I use this to control maximum and, or I should just say maximum acceleration. Back here, I use this for decoupled mode. I actually don't want to give you guys a motion sickness, so I'll come around this way. So again, as I was saying, I use this for decoupled mode. I use this for a break, and I use this for cruise control. Coming over to the right side, I really enjoy this hand rest, especially if you're playing for a long time, it's just really convenient and actually super comfortable. And as I said, there's another stick on this side, it has a push button, it feels really good. It feels better than the Switch Joy-Cons, for instance, that tell you how good it feels. Moving the Hotas in this direction, I actually get a roll in the ship, but some people can change that. It's all up to how you prefer. I use this button to cycle through the different types of countermeasures, so chaff and flares, and then I use this to launch it. Standard trigger button there. This hat I use to look around the ship, inside of the ship. That's to launch missiles. On the right side here, I actually use this to target the closest hostile. These are all different modes of strafe, or strafing. So down, up, left, right. And then this also is a target, and so nearest, um, not nearest actually, that was this one, nearest hostile. But you know, friendly, all the different types of cycles there. And then I'll give you guys one more final look at this. It's actually really nice. I should mention here, I like the shorter spring, but um, the actual set, it comes with three different size springs that you can use to make it taller. And then I've actually seen some DIY videos on YouTube as well, where you can actually cut the springs. And that's the mouse I use. I just like that it has a couple additional buttons. Thank you, and please visit again.